Well, good morning, and a blessed Memorial Day weekend to each of you. Today is going to be the highlight day of the weekend, I think, so opportunity to get out and enjoy the sunshine today. Um, if you turn to page three in your bulletin, just highlight a couple things there. Uh, first at the very top, uh, food pantry is running a little low, so if you have some extra goodies around that you can bring in for the food pantry, we'd appreciate it. And also in the middle of the page, remind you about the, uh, we continue to work on retiring the roof debt. And finally at the bottom, VBS is coming up soon. Emily is all excited. So uh, that's, what, two weeks away? Two weeks away, so take a look at that. Get the kids registered for that. On page four, um, during VBS, we also have a special adult Bible study called Culture and Conflict. It's from the, the World May Know series. I invite you to join us for that in the uh, youth room. And then finally, the CCC would like to say a huge thank you to everyone who helped with the school age playground project. That is going to be completed shortly. So uh, that will be nice to see that one done. And I know they'll be glad, and the kids will be glad to get to use it all. So. Gary has something to say. Uh, I, got a, I received an email from uh, Pastor McClellan. Uh, there's been a death in his family, so there is a slight delay in the process. Uh, he figured it'd be about a week or so before he'd get back to us regarding uh, what he wants to do. He did indicate he didn't want to visit. Uh, but it'll be at least a week or so before we get any more information. It's my understanding that it was his father who passed away, and uh, he lives in Virginia, so again, there's a, a fair amount of travel involved with this. So please, please pray for Pastor McClellan and his family. Thank you, Gary. Let's rise and share a Christian greeting. M915, Lord's blessings on your worship.
We turn to page 184 for Divine Service 3. We rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave the iniquity of my sin. (coughs) Almighty God, our maker and redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed. Wherefore we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. O most merciful God, who has given your only begotten Son to die for us, have mercy upon us, and for his sake grant us remission of all our sins. And by your Holy Spirit, increase in us through knowledge of you and of your will and true obedience to your word to the end that by your grace we may come to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us and has given his only Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all of our sins. To those who believe on his name, he gives power to become the children of God and has promised them the Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. Amen. Cast your burden on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never permit the righteous to be moved. My heart is in anguish within me. The terrors of death have fallen upon me. But I call to God, and the Lord will save me. Evening and morning and at noon I utter my complaint and moan until he hears my voice. He redeems my soul and safety from the battle that I wage, for many are arrayed against me. Cast your burden on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never permit the righteous to be moved.
Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And let us pray. O God, the giver of all that is good, by your holy inspiration grant that we may think those things that are right, and by your merciful guiding accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our lector this morning is Glenn Borchers, and our first reading comes to us from the book of Acts. And in it, Paul receives a vision from God directing him to go to Macedonia. And in Philippi, a city of Macedonia, he meets Lydia, who hears the good news of Jesus Christ from Paul. She believes and is baptized. Okay, from Acts 16, verses 9 through 15. During the night, Paul had a vision of a man in, of Macedonia standing and begging him. Come over to Macedonia and help us. After Paul had seen the vision, we got ready at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. From Troas, we set out to sea and sailed straight for Samothrace, and the next day on to Neapolis. From there, we traveled to Philippi, a Roman colony, and a leading city of that district of Macedonia, and we stayed there several days. On the Sabbath, we went outside the city gate to the river, where we expected to find a place of prayer. We sat down and began to speak to the women who had gathered there. One of those listening was a woman named Lydia, a dealer in purple cloth from the city of Tyratira, who was a worshiper of God. The Lord opened her heart to respond to Paul's message. When she and the members of her household were baptized, she invited us to her home. If you consider me a believer in the Lord, she said, come and stay in my house. And she persuaded us. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. Our second reading comes to us from the book of Revelation. And John sees the new Jerusalem. And he attempts to describe the beauty of heaven so that we get an idea of what a magnificent and awesome place it is. From Revelation 21, verses 9 through 14, and 21 to 27. One of the seven angels who had seven bowls full of seven last plagues came and said to me, Come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. And he carried me away in the spirit to a mountain great and high, and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. It shone with the glory of God, and its brilliance was like that of the very precious jewel, like a jasper, clear as crystal. It had a great high wall with twelve gates, and with the twelve angels at the gates. On the gates were written the names of the twelve tribes of Israel. There were three gates on the east, three on the north, three on the south, and three on the west. The wall of the city had twelve foundations, and on them were the tw names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. The twelve gates were twelve pearls, each gate made of a single pearl. The great, city of the, the great street of the city was pure gold, like transparent glass. I did not see a temple in the city, because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives it light, and the lamp is its lamp. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their splendor into it. On no, one, on no day will the gates ever be shut, for there will be no night there. The glory and the honor of the nations will be brought into it. Nothing impure will ever enter it, nor will anything, anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful but only those whose names are written on the Lamb's Book of Life. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. We turn to page 190 and rise for the singing of the Alleluia verse. Hallelujah. 
The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 16th chapter. We be to In our reading, we find Jesus speaking to his disciples about his Father, and he tells them to pray in his name to the Father. He also reminds us that we will have trouble in this world, but that he has overcome this world. And that day you will no longer ask me anything. I tell you the truth, my Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Until now you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask and you will receive, and your joy will be complete. Though I have been speaking figuratively, a time is coming when I will no longer use this kind of language, but tell you plainly about my Father. In that day you will ask in my name. I am not saying that I will ask the Father on your behalf. No, the Father himself loves you because you have loved me and have believed that I came from God. I came from the Father and entered the world, Now I'm leaving the world and going back to the Father. Then Jesus' disciples said, Now you are speaking clearly and without figures of speech. Now we can see that you know all things, and you do not even need to have anyone ask you questions. This makes us believe that you came from God. You believe at last, Jesus answered. But a time is coming and has come when you'll be scattered each to his own home. You will leave me all alone, yet I am not alone, for my Father is with me. I have told you these things, so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We'll continue with the Apostles' Creed, or excuse me, the children's message. You may be seated, and we invite any children to come forward and parents that would like to join them. Good morning, boys and girls. Good morning. Nice to see you today. Today is kind of the first day of summer. I mean, it's not officially the first day of summer, but a lot of people think that Memorial Day weekend is when summer starts. So I have a question for you. What are you doing this summer? Tell me something that you're looking forward to. Um, Annika. Soccer, cool. Is Jesus going to be with you when you're at soccer? Yeah. What else are you looking forward to? Yeah, Allie. Oh, planting your garden? Awesome. Will Jesus be with you in your garden? Yeah. What else are you looking forward to? Yeah, Morgan. Playing basketball? Baseball. Oh, cool. Will Jesus be with you when you're playing baseball? Yeah. because I did. Oh, yeah. Will Jesus be with you when you play baseball? Yeah. 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 What else are you looking forward to? Is it ben? What? Okay. Is anybody going on a trip this summer? On a vacation? Yeah. Ariana, are you? To the state fair. Whoa, that's a cool place. Will Jesus be with you at the state fair? Yeah. Okay. I don't know, we're going to a Twins game this summer. I'm looking forward to a Twins game in June. That'll be fun, and I think Jesus will be with us at the Twins game also. And we're going to the National Youth Gathering, which will be fun in Minneapolis. Jesus will be with us there. What about Vacation Bible School? Is anybody coming to Vacation Bible School in two weeks? Will Jesus be with us there? Yes, yeah. Wherever you go, whatever you do, Jesus will be with you. Okay, he's everywhere. I brought my flat Jesus with me, okay? And we're doing flat Jesus again this summer. So if you didn't get a chance to make one in Sunday school last week, we'll have some out that you can color and take with you. And so wherever you go this summer, 
Jesus is with you. So take him along and take a picture of Jesus with you to remember, to remind yourself that Jesus is with us wherever we go, whatever we do. Okay? Why don't we fold our hands and say a prayer? Okay? Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For being with me. Wherever I go. I love you, Jesus. Amen. All right, you can take a seat. Now we'll turn to page 192 and we'll rise and confess together our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Page 192. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our hymn of the day is number 725. You may be seated. be unto you in peace from God our Father and from the wonderful Savior the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for this morning is one verse from the gospel lesson John 16 verse 32. The time is coming and has come when you will all scatter each to his own home. You will leave me all alone yet I am not alone for my Father is with me. In Jesus' name. From the old man in the nursing home who's outlived all of his friends and most of his remaining relatives pay very little attention to him, to the new bride, home alone all day, no one to talk to, until her husband comes home. To the college graduate who has his first job in a strange city, working with strange people, living in a one-room apartment. They all suffer from the same malady, loneliness. A well-known doctor was asked to name the one problem that afflicts the most people. Without hesitation, he said, loneliness, just plain loneliness. And then he went on to say, and I quote, the longer I practice, the more sure I am that there is no condition so acute, so universal, 
Everybody at one time or another is subject to its effects and with many it becomes chronic. Now loneliness is something different from being alone. You know, we all need alone time to reflect, to think, to pray, to make decisions. But about so much of ourselves, and then we desire to be with people again. Not just to be with a crowd, but to be with people, for we desire and need their support. We need their comfort, their encouragement, a relationship with them. Now, when Jesus spoke the words of our text, the incident in the Garden of Gethsemane had not yet occurred. But Jesus knew, he's indicating it, that the time would come when those disciples would all abandon him. He knew that it was a time that even though he would drink the cup of suffering, the Father would also leave him. And he would cry out from the cross, why have you forsaken me? And yet, in our verse, he is confident that the Lord will be there with him as he goes through his ordeal, becoming the marvelous atonement for the sins of the world. As friends of Jesus, and because of our baptism, We are also children of the Heavenly Father. And we can be sure that as he was with Jesus, he would also be with us. And so may the Holy Spirit be present as we look at our text, using as our theme, don't be afraid to be alone. Our first point is that God won't leave us even though we try to leave him. Ever since the first sin, the sin of Adam and Eve in the garden, which resulted in loneliness and isolation from God, people had tried to be independent from God. Look what happens in the passion history of Jesus. The disciples abandon him. Peter denies him. Jesus commends the care of his mother to another disciple, and that just leaves him all alone. Today it happens a little bit different. We forsake Jesus when we insist on doing it our own way rather than the way of Jesus. It happens when we don't identify as being a Christian in a group of people because we're afraid of being on the outside, the minority looking in. On the other hand, many of the famous people in the world, they just want to be left alone. And so they're almost prisoners in their gated estates afraid to come out. Some college students, when they leave home, they just want to be left alone. And when the church reaches out to them, they revert to being the natural man again just want to be left alone by God as well. Lord, just leave me alone is a slogan that is a part of far too many peoples in the United States. And if nothing changes, life for them will end tragically. But God doesn't want that to happen, and so he continues reaching out He doesn't want anyone to be separated from him. You see, Jesus has already taken care of the forsakenness of hell for us. When Jesus went to the cross, he made the payment for our sins. And now God has forgiven us. However, how can God give forgiveness to someone who is busy running away? 
It isn't going to happen. But for us, when we turn to God in faith, we have the assurance that he will never forsake us because Jesus was forsaken for us. You know the passage, the promise. I will never leave you nor forsake you. And Jesus teaches us much the same thought in one of his last teachings out of the scripture before he goes to heaven. I will be with you to the end of the age. And even when we wander away from God, God still keeps searching for us. Jesus teaches that to us in the parable of the lost sheep. The shepherd leaves the 99 in search for the one that was lost. He reaches out to us in whatever manner and wherever he can to get the gospel of Jesus to us. Often he does it through the church, through the pastors, through the board of elders, through members of the congregation. And that's happening for us even this morning. You see, nothing can separate us from the love of God. St. Paul picks up that thought in Romans chapter 8. Neither height nor depth nor anything else in all the world can separate us from the love of God that is in Jesus Christ. And so for us who know Jesus, when you commit your sins, how do you feel about it? You do that which you really didn't want to do. You feel ashamed, at least I do. But not even that can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And that leads us then to our second point. God is always with us wherever we go. To the young frightened Jacob who had to leave home because he had angered his older brother Esau, God said, I'm with you and will watch over you wherever you go and I will bring you back to this land problem that many of us have is we try to localize God, localize him in a building. If you want to talk to God, you go to the church. That's where he's at. No, that's a mistake. Jesus is with us wherever we go, at work, at play, at home. He is there. We can't escape his presence. There was a little boy learning to read. He was sitting on his father's lap. The father was an avowed atheist and he wanted his son to read the phrase, God is nowhere. Oh, this little guy got it all wrong. He read, God is now here. You know, that's a good little phrase to remind ourselves that no matter where we're at, God is now here with me. In addition to that, he's with us in every circumstance of our lives. We see that truth taught in the scriptures. God was with Joseph when his brothers sold him into slavery. They meant it for evil, but God turned it into something wonderfully good as he saved many, many lives through the work of Joseph. When Hagar had a child, Hagar, the servant of Sarah, Sarah became very jealous and insisted her husband Abraham send Hagar into the wilderness. But God saw Hagar. He saw her tears. And he promised her that he would raise a great nation from her. God reached out to Elijah when Elijah was hiding in the cave, suffering from depression, feeling that no one was listening to his prophetic message. God is with us today in the same way. He's with our youth who often are very concerned about the future. 
He's with us in our middle age when often the burdens are the heaviest. He's with us in our old age when our health begins to break down. But the best of all, he is with us when we approach the hour of death. And when it occurs, he will take us to be in paradise with him. And he will wipe away our tears once and for all. Wonderful, wonderful future. So don't be afraid to be alone. To some extent, the remedy for loneliness is already right in our own hands. We can look up fellow Christians, we make new friends, we can get involved in all kinds of worthwhile projects. But the best solution is to have a close walk with the Lord Jesus. Remember the promise that he will always be near you. And then cultivate that sense of Jesus being near. Cultivate that into your life. Jesus walks with me. And then you and I, won't have to be afraid to be alone. God grant us that security, that blessing. For Jesus' sake, amen. And we rise. And now may the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting, amen. And we turn to page 192 to sing the offertory. be seated for the gathering of the offering for today. We rise for prayer. Would you join your heart with mine in prayer? Holy and almighty God, we praise you for the word we've heard from our Savior Jesus. Thank you for assuring us that no matter the situation, we need not suffer loneliness, for you are there with your mercy your caring, your power to change things for the better. Forgive us when we have not practiced our faith and confidence in your presence with us. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the world leaders, for those in government and positions of authority. Give them hearts that are filled with your gift of wisdom. Frustrate the efforts of the terrorists and those who would do our nation harm. Protect our military personnel that are in harm's way. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who are hurting and facing health challenges. For Lee Nygaard, Duane Knut, Maya Noreen, Ken Brown, Jeff Schmidt, Ryan Jonk, Mike Nundahl, Connie Welter, Francie Winkles. We also remember... Carrie Ouellette, who is hospitalized. 
We ask, Lord, that you would grant your healing powers to them. Be a God of mercy to them. Grant strength and healing as it pleases you. We also offer thanksgiving with the parents of Madison May, Josh, and Rachel Jensen as they rejoice in the gift of a healthy daughter. Lord, we pray that as it is your will that you give her spiritual birth in Jesus' name and during the sacrament of baptism. We also pray for those who are in our family prayer calendar, Jacob and Abigail Edlin, Joanne Fiechner, Kendall and Becky Galtz, Denise Hernan, Rick and Pat Hoganson, Dan, Holly, Tatum and Marley Holt, Emmanuel and Glennis Jurger. We pray, Lord, that you keep them in your care and that you provide for their needs. We also remember before you the family of Hazel Bakken, whom you called home this week. We ask, Lord, that you comfort them with their Christian faith and hope in the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. We ask, Lord, your blessing upon the service that is being planned and that people would rejoice in the gospel of the Lord Jesus. We also pray for Pastor-elect McCallum as he considers our call to be our shepherd. May your Holy Spirit be present with him and guide him to the right decision. And Lord, if it is your will, lead him to accept our call. We also pray for the family as they mourn the loss of the pastor's dad. Again, we ask, Lord, that the Christian faith and hope that is in the Lord Jesus would comfort this family and lead them through the way. All of this we ask of you, O Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, in your mercy. During a time of silence, I would give you the opportunity to lay before the Lord that which is on your heart. It may be a petition of great need for yourself or for someone you love, or simply a petition of thanksgiving for some special blessing. The Lord's in his house, and he hears us. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for ourselves in this new week, for the gifts we've received from your bountiful goodness. We offer you our thanks and praise and the offering that we have placed upon the altar. We pray that you would bless the labor of our hands and minds, give us good health, protect us and all those we love from harm and danger, especially on this Memorial Day weekend. Into your hands we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who taught us his prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And you may be seated as we continue with the singing of our hymn of response. Hymn number 685, 685, Let us ever walk with Jesus.
This week is uh, Memorial Day, the day set aside by our nation to observe our, and honor our military, and especially those who have fallen in service for us. Yesterday morning in our family devotions, my wife and I happened to read a devotion that was written by Dr. Dale Meyer, the president of Concordia Seminary. It spoke a lot to me in my life. It was meaningful. And I believe it will be meaningful for you as well as we approach Memorial Day. I've asked DCE Mark to read it for us. It's entitled Sacred Ground. Years ago, I visited the Vietnam Memorial. The memorial was still new at the time of my visit. In addition to the famous wall, there's a statuary of combat soldiers, life-size statues that your imagination easily makes lifelike. An elderly woman, well-meaning, told her husband to stand by the statues so she could take a picture. He quickly said no. His hushed words and humble body language clearly indicated that the place was too sacred for such tourist stuff. In my teaching, I sometimes have students watch the D-Day landing from the movie Saving Private Ryan. Standing in the back of the room, I watch their silent attention. The scene over, I ask, how do you feel? They start to intellectualize, but I hold them to their feelings. No abstract thoughts. Now the responses are profoundly human and subdues. Have the years of relative peace at home led us to intellectualize, to forget the horrors of war and the costs so many paid for us? Not far from the Vietnam Memorial, there are other memorials. The World War II Memorial expresses or impresses upon silent visitors the global scope of war's horrors. The Korean War Memorial also has statues, and if you see them at night, you imagine being in Korea. The darkness of our sinful world is deep, and the sacrifices we remember on Memorial Day are sacred. With hand over heart, let us show our due gratitude and devotion, and let us teach it to the next generation. And so it's really proper for us to recognize our members who have served in the military, men and women. Would you please rise, those of you who have served in the military. standing. We also want to recognize those individuals who have given their lives to protect our way of living, our values. And so I invite all of you to rise for a moment of silence. Heavenly Father, Lord of the nation, we give you thanks for the men and women who have served in the military defending our nation. We pray that the sacrifice of our fellow citizens who have died in service will not be in vain. Move us to properly provide for their dependents and to provide needed help for disabled veterans. Grant that we may live in peace during our years on this earth. All of this we ask according to your will. And in the name of Jesus, your Son, our Savior. Amen. And receive now the benediction of your Lord. 
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen and amen. We remain standing to sing our last hymn.